Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Bible Believers Fellowship invites you to join us for the teaching of God's Word, Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our two-part message from Galatians chapter 3, verses 8 through 14, titled, Christ was cursed for us. As we study through Galatians verse by verse, you will see that this little epistle corrects a great deal of error that is taught in today's churches, but it is the overall culture of self-love and self-esteem that has produced a mindset both in and outside of the churches that has people believing that God loves them just as they are. From the time kids are old enough to understand, they're told that they are wonderful and God made them exactly as they are on purpose. And that's a lie. Children ought to be taught the truth. We are conceived in sin. We are born with a sinful nature. We're totally depraved. If you're talking about someone's face, if you're talking about their personality, that's one thing. But when you tell a person that they are exactly what God wanted to create from the very beginning and that they're perfect the way they are, you're deceiving that child. But if you will teach them this truth of the depravity of man and that we're all born in sin and once we become aware of right and wrong, then that child can understand their need for a savior in light of the holiness of God and, in contrast, the sinfulness of man. But today we have a bunch of people who don't think they need saved. So the idea of Jesus being cursed for us makes absolutely no sense. We have a nation of lost people who refuse to acknowledge that they are lost. And that's the reason that it's so important to faithfully teach God's words in the local churches and in our homes. We must revive the knowledge of our holy God and the realization of our fallen nature if people are to be saved in these last days. Jesus said ye must be born again. There's a reason for that. And that is why Jesus was cursed for us. Glory to the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 10 in, in Galatians 3. Verse 10. Read that with me. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Now stop there. That, that's it. Before you are saved by the blood of Jesus, you are accountable and responsible for keeping the law. You see, we're going to see later, I'm not going to jump in too deep because we're going to go through this again a little bit later, but the law was not there to save you. It was to basically show you your need and say, you can't do it. But until you turn to Christ for salvation, you're held accountable to keep it. Amen. And that's why if you won't get saved by the blood of Jesus, you're going to stand at a judgment and be judged by the law. And you, you're without hope. It's, you're done. You better receive the blood of Jesus and the payment that Jesus provided you when you still have the chance because it's appointed unto men once to die and after that the judgment. Now's the time to be saved. Now is the appointed time. Now is the day of salvation. Better get saved now. Keep putting it off. Keep putting it off. You're under the curse. Sin is the transgression of the law. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Even the little sins and things you do, if you just think them through, you'll find out they're related to the law. I mean, you know, uh, even little things, like little white lies, well, you sh it's still bearing false witness. Uh, you, you make a bad choice, and maybe you didn't purposely kill somebody, but you can make bad choices and it end up costing someone their life or at least injuring them. Well, that's still a sin. And so 
what, what were you doing at that time? It, you know, you're, you're held responsible for your actions. And that's why it turns around and says that the, the law is fulfilled by loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor enough, you'll do what you need to do to keep them from uh, tripping and falling into a hole that you dug or whatever the case may be. But you just trace it back and sin is the transgression of the law. Even if you began keeping this, no one's ever done this, but even if you could begin keeping the law, mm -hmm. let's say from the moment you were a little child and suddenly you became aware of what's right and wrong and you suddenly were like, oh, well, I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do. I'm going to do it perfectly. <laughs> Every time mommy says, do this. Oh, yes, mom. Yes. And no one's ever done that. So even if you started today and you were able to keep the law perfectly, that doesn't remove your guilt for past sins. If you go out and kill somebody tomorrow and you stand before the judge, he's not going to listen to you when you say, yeah, but judge, look, at, I mean, that one little moment where I pulled the trigger, yeah, that was bad. But, <laughs> but, I've been good. I haven't killed anybody up to that point and I promise to never do it again. <laughs> that only a liberal judge would care about that. The liberal judges, they're different. But a just judge is going to get justice for the one you killed. And no human being has ever kept the law. That's just the reality. And we then must surrender to God and trust Him. We're, it, okay, let's say you don't understand. I don't understand. People will say, I don't understand. What, why did Jesus die? Why does His death have to do with me? And all that. You know what? At this point, you simply need to understand you're not going to do it. You're not going to be able to save yourself. You're not, you can't keep the law. So what do we do? Verse 11, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. You see, at this point, you understand your need. You need to simply turn and say, Okay, God, I am helpless and I am hopeless on my own. What do I do? That's where faith comes in. That's where you are now looking to God instead of your own opinions or to your own religion or whatever else. And you must make a simple choice. Either die trying to fulfill God's law in an attempt to earn salvation or put your faith in God. Amen. That's your choice. And if you think you're going to fulfill the law, you're going to die trying. Yeah. But you're not going to succeed. If you do not turn to God in faith, you will be judged by the law. Read verse 12 with me. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. You, you, if you're choosing to reject Jesus Christ, I don't care what religion you want to claim or no religion at all, if you reject Jesus Christ, you are choosing to try to do the impossible and keep the law. And that's how you'll be judged. How many of you remember this verse? And I want to ask you this question. Do you want to stand here? And I'm asking you this question because only you know if you're saved this morning. So you need to clear this up in your mind. And maybe you are saved, but you haven't got these things clear in your head and your heart so that you can then turn around and explain them to other people. Well, if you're trying to keep the law, this is your judgment in Revelation 20.12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. You don't want to be there. Because it will be exposed you didn't keep the law. But you also rejected the payment that Jesus provided. And all whose names are not found written in the book of life are cast into the lake of fire. Because our works could never save us. So God came to do the impossible. This is why the deity of Jesus Christ is not a take it or leave it. You cannot believe on Jesus but think He's created and be saved. You've got a false Jesus. Amen. That's what I explained to the Mormon girls out there. You, you have to believe that God came 
as a man. Because if it was a created Jesus, whether it was Michael the archangel, like the Jehovah's Witnesses claim, or some offspring of the Heavenly Father near the star Kolob, like the Mormons claim, or whatever, if he was created, he needed a Savior himself. Only God coming as a man to die for the sins of man could we have any hope. And that's what happened. Look at verse 13. Read that with me. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh, and He hung on the cross, referred to here as a tree. It's a direct reference to Deuteronomy 21, 22-23. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, which all of us have, and he be put to death, which Jesus was in our place, and thou hang him on a tree, which is what the cross was made of, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, for thou shalt in any wise bury him that day, for he that is hanged is accursed of God. That's what Jesus did for us. That the land, thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Jesus came first and foremost for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And He died to pay for their sins, but He also paid for the sins of the whole world. And when they rejected Him, in come the Gentiles, and all of us Gentiles say, Praise the Lord. Amen. Whenever you think of Jesus on the cross, you should be reminded that He is dying the death that you and I deserve. And at this point, I don't even push it off on you. It's so personal. When I see Jesus on the cross, I just see Greg. When I see Jesus on the cross, I think that's what I deserve. I deserve to die a torturous death, shed my blood, and to be cast into a lake of fire. But I have a Savior who took my place. Amen. That's why I can't stop singing. <laughs> I just can't stop singing. And I never stop singing, even throughout eternity. And look at verse 14 in Galatians 3. Read that with me. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Praise God. Amen. That's you, that's me. We have taken this promise that God has given and received it when we have trusted in Jesus Christ, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. The message is simple, but the implications are profound. The implications should keep you up at night sometimes. I mean, sometimes I get to thinking about this, and you ever, all right, it's comparable to this. You ever laying in bed, and all of a sudden there's this big boom. And you jar it out of bed. And so you get up and you grab a, a, your gun or your ball bat or, or something. Or your phone to call 911. And you're looking around. And then you, and then you see, oh, it was the broom fell and made that noise. Then you go try to lay down and your body is like, what? 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 And you're just, all right, let's settle down. No, it's adrenaline. You see, sometimes I think about this and I just can't sleep. It's not that I don't have peace. It's that the implications are so profound. And I just sit and think, oh, wow. What you have done for me, Lord. Amen. What you've done. It's just something I cannot even... And I try and I try and I just sit and think on it and think about the implications. And there have been times where without even one... I didn't do it on purpose, but as I'm sitting there thinking, all of a sudden, I'm reminded... I saw this huge fire one time. And in this huge fire, we thought, uh, we thought there was a person in there. Thankfully, it turned out there wasn't. But in this huge fire, and thinking of someone in there, and then you think, well, I should be in a lake like that. And Jesus has saved me from that. Amen. And for eternity, being just alone and not having the fellowship that we're enjoying like this right here is just a taste of it. But yet in hell you won't even get a taste of it. And Jesus has saved you from that if you've believed on His death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. How that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You see, when you understand all that's behind that, then you read that simple message, but you see the profound implications. 
He was cursed for your sake. They beat him to a bloody pulp. They mocked him. They spit upon him. They put a crown of thorns that ripped his skin off his skull and sent blood running down his face. And then they nailed him to that cross. Don't think about anything else but the fact that he did that for you. Amen. Until it really starts to sink in, he did that for you. He became a curse and was hung on the tree. And I want to close by asking a few questions. And these are questions that I have asked myself and all of us need to ask ourselves. Are you telling others about this amazing act of love? Folks, it, it's so simple. You, just, you can hand them the little cards we have and say, uh, this is a little card that tells how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. And then there's a website on the bottom if you want to learn more, want to contact the pastor. See how easy that was? I know everyone in this room, everyone in this room, including the boys. You boys in the back, I know you well enough. I know you're intelligent enough. You could do that. So what's the excuse for the old people? None. Everybody in this room can hand someone a little gospel tract or a little scripture card and say, this tells you how that Christ died for your sins and was buried and rose again. Amen. That's all you've got to do. You say, well, I, I, no, don't, I, I, don't. All God has told you and I to do is to preach that gospel. From that point on, the Holy Spirit does the work. Now, if you can continue to talk to them and you can pray with them, fine. But that's your calling right there. And I mean everybody in the room. No matter what else God has called you to do, everybody in the room has been called to preach the gospel to every living creature. Now, do you really grasp and appreciate the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ? Most depression is cured right there. You know, sometimes there's a medical thing, sometimes there's a this or that, but that's very seldom. Most of the time, people are not living in the light of what God has done for them and enjoying the peace that belongs to them. It belongs to you. If you don't have it, you're allowing the enemy to rob you of it, but it's yours. And at any time, you can just drop in prayer and say, Lord, I feel terrible right now. I feel depressed. I feel a darkness over me, and I know that's not you. And I ask you to remove the darkness, and in Jesus' name, help me to think about your salvation that is mine through Jesus Christ. Help me to throw off this man-made, this me-made depression, or even guilt. You may even feel guilty about something, or your past may cre creep up to you, and you say, no, I know that God is not throwing that guilt on me. God is not throwing my past on me. So in Jesus' name, I ask you to remove this guilt and shame and to help me to live in the knowledge that I'm saved. Amen. And to give you all the glory. Amen. And then start singing. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. I mean, maybe that song or another song, but sing. And if, you, if you're in a place you can't sing out loud, sing in your head. Mm -hmm. Amen. Final question I want to ask. Are you attempting to live a life of gratitude and thankfulness for such an incredible sacrifice? Folks, if any of you do, and some of you may have, I can't remember all who have, but sometimes I have people come up and say, you know, how much should I be given to the Lord? Or should I be giving 10%? Or what if I can't do that? You know what? I'm not the person to answer that. Mm -hmm. You think about what He's done for you. Is Jesus worth it? Oh, yeah. Tithing, I'm going to tell you this, tithing is not a commandment to the New Testament Christian. I believe it's a goal and a privilege. But there are times where people can't give 10% uh, of their income. But it's a goal that you should set. And you know what? If you think I'm trying to get your money here, you don't even have to give it to Bible Believers Fellowship. Give it to the Lord. Now, if you feel like this ministry is worth it, worthy of that kind of support, give it here. If not, find one that is. 
This is about you and the Lord, not about me trying to increase our offerings. Amen. But I'm telling you, it's going to be a shameful day for a lot of people. Now, some people don't know any better and if some of you are growing in Christ. But as you grow, these are questions you need to ask yourself. And then you ask yourself, is God worth it? Is Jesus worth it? Is being saved from eternal hell worth that? And my answer is personally, yeah. So I've done whatever I had to do to be able to give Amen. at least 10% of what God gives me back to the Lord. And that meant sometimes I did have to maybe eat out a little less or when I rented a house I, or buy, I mean, when we buy a house or whatever, you have to go a little bit smaller so I don't put myself in a situation I can't do that. But you, I don't want to know your answer. Don't come up to me later and tell me what your answer is. This is between you and God. But it's also, what are you doing with your time? How many people have told me they don't have time to be in the Word or time in prayer or time to witness, but then... They know all what's going on with the latest sitcoms. <laughs> okay? You see my point. I don't have to linger on that, do I? And, and then the way you're living your life behind closed doors with your family and your friends. And what about when you're alone? Because God is there. We all have to ask these questions, folks. And I think you only get the right answers when you get what we studied this morning Amen. and consider those implications. That's when the answers really become easy. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this message that we receive. It would be a terrible message if all we found out was that Jesus became a curse and died. But it's a wonderful message because we also know He was buried and rose again. He has conquered sin and death. And he, he said that if I raise myself, then you know I'll be able to raise you also. <laughs> if any man believe in Me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Because He said, I am the resurrection and the life. <clears throat> Father, help us to live it. Live it in a very real sense. Not because uh, we think we need to add something to our salvation, but in response to being saved. And in response to that terrible sacrifice that was paid on our behalf. And yet, the wonderful gift that we receive as a result of believing on Jesus. May He be glorified. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Makes you glad you're saved. Amen? Uh, four of you are. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's uh, be sure to visit our. solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house.